According to the commonly accepted timeline of humanity's development, advanced technology is strictly limited to more recent societies. The process of irrigation, for example, was not invented until about 6000 BC. Materials such as iron were supposedly not used until 1500 BC. Despite our beliefs that ancient people had been technologically lacking, there are, in fact, many technological feats that people in the distant past seem to have been capable of, based on recent finds. I have done thorough research on each of these discoveries, and there are some details that I have uncovered, which have not been mentioned in the YouTube videos on other channels. Some of these artifacts you might be familiar with. However, the purpose of this video is not just to show you that they exist. Instead, I will be showing connections and similarities between these ancient objects, and explaining why it seems possible that people had advanced technology thousands of years ago. In the Sharplanina mountain range in Kosovo, an ancient device resembling a transformer was discovered. This device was dated by analysts to be at least 20,000 years old, refuting any notion that the object could have been made recently. The wires of the transformer are made of a non-corrosive copper. The way in which the copper wires wrap around the stone is similar to a toroidal inductor, which is a component used in electronic circuits. The type of rock that this transformer is carved from is limestone. The creators of this device may have inserted the transformer into a limestone insulator to hold it and isolate the electrical current. There are holes carved into the front of the insulator, which may have been used for holding it on something like a pedestal. The limestone insulator and the transformer itself appear to have been crushed from pressure of some type, causing the insulator to crack and the wires to be bent and frayed. The top portion of the transformer was cracked also, and the insulator was pushed into the transformer. The device seems to be held together by copper wires, which run through the entire insulator, since you can observe wires protruding from the rock in some spots. These wires would have held the limestone together after it was crushed, much like how rebar can hold together damaged concrete. The backside of the insulator has four symmetrical plug holes, which would have served as the openings that wires could be plugged into. The rims around each of these holes are also made of a non-corrosive copper, Modern copper is known to corrode quickly when it is not bound to other materials, such as zinc or tin. The material used to make this device is nearly pure copper, yet it has not corroded. As discussed in my last video, ancient people were somehow capable of altering metals, such as iron, to prevent them from corroding without combining them with other types of metals. Since this object is supposedly 20,000 years old and has not corroded, it indicates that the copper in this object was also altered in some way to prevent corrosion. Since ancient people had apparently been capable of creating complex transformers, then it is safe to assume that they must have had other types of technology that required electrical energy. In support of this, there have been numerous other discoveries of advanced ancient technology around the world. Components of ancient machinery were discovered near the Ural Mountains in Russia. When geologists were attempting to extract gold from rocks, Thousands of small metal coils, shafts, and springs, ranging in both size and composition, were uncovered from depths ranging between 10 and 40 feet deep. The smallest of these coils were 1 ten thousandths of an inch. Some of these nanocoils were made of a non-corrosive copper, similar to the material used in the Kosovo Transformer, while others were made of tungsten and molybdenum, according to the Russian Academy of Science. These metal components were dated to be an average age of 300,000 years old, while the rocks that the springs were found amongst were dated to be only 100,000 years old. A 1996 study of the nanocoils ruled out the possibility of the objects having been from test rockets that flew near the area. Since the coils were found too deep below the ground level, the deepest ones being found 40 feet underground. If these components were not used in rocketry, then what were they used for? Nanosprings are used today in nanomachines, sensors, inductors, and photonic metamaterials. Modern nanosprings are typically made of carbide, silicon carbide, or silicon dioxide, none of which the nanostructures found near the Ural Mountains are composed of. Modern technology could not produce the smallest of these nanocoils, since they are currently made using the VLS method, in which the materials are vaporized and slowly recondensed into the shape of a coil in simple terms. Molybdenum and copper are not capable of being vaporized and reformed in this manner, the way that carbide and the silicon compounds used currently are. 
Tungsten would need to be combined with disulfide for this process to be carried out, but disulfide is not present in the nanostructures found in the Ural region. The depth at which these nanostructures were found also demonstrates that they are, in fact, ancient, explaining why they were made of such unusual materials. If even modern technology cannot create the smallest of these nanostructures, then how were they made? An artifact resembling an outlet plug was found encased in a rock in Texas. There are three metal prongs extending from the rock. The plug also has an insulator base, which is a requirement for outlet plugs to function. The rock that this plug was encased in was dated to be at least 100,000 years old, and is composed of granite, quartz, and feldspar. There is no evidence of the plug having been glued or welded into the stone, which it would need to be in order for it to stay in place if it had been planted into the rock recently. The plug is very similar to a three-pronged Type M outlet plug used only in countries far from the United States, including South Africa, Singapore, and India. Since the object is encased in rock, it is generally assumed that the plug must be far older than a modern one. It would be essentially impossible for a modern plug of this type or any other to have become embedded in a granite stone in the United States. A disc-like object made of schist was discovered in the tomb of Sabu at the burial grounds of Saqqara in Egypt in 1936. This object is about 24 inches in diameter and is dated to be over 5,000 years old. Given that Egyptians were believed to have only used stone and copper tools, it would have been difficult to carve a stone as fragile as schist so precisely. At the center of the disc, there is a thin tube about 10 centimeters in diameter. This indicates that a rod of some sort was intended to be placed into the opening to either hold or propel the disc. Demonstrations of the potential uses of the schist disc can be found. None of these methods seem to be particularly efficient or useful. However, a simple alteration in how this disc is used allows it to function in a much more efficient manner. If the disc is moved up and down, rather than rotating it, more water is displaced. The way in which the disc is curved upwards allows water to easily flow through it when the disc is pushed downward. When the disc is pulled upwards, it would push the water because the shape of the disc would scoop the water up like a bowl. An up and down motion of this type would enable water to be propelled through a pipe. This method could also be used for another type of liquid similar in viscosity to water. Mercury has been discovered in Egyptian tombs and in ancient structures around the world, including the chambers under Teotihuacan in Mexico and in ancient Chinese tombs. In modern times, mercury is used in a variety of electronic devices. Historians claim that ancient societies used mercury because it represented water and was believed to ward off evil spirits. Perhaps ancient people had a more practical reason for using mercury, aside from just for symbology. An object was photographed by a U.S. Navy oceanographic research ship named the USNS Eltonen in 1964. The object that the crew discovered appears to be an antenna of some sort. Despite the claims that the object is merely a sea sponge called the Chondrocladia concrescens, the structure was located over 12,800 feet below sea level. A sponge that is only around a foot tall on average would not have been distinguishable at such a depth. This species of sea sponge is known to reproduce at a rapid rate. Therefore, the USNS Eltonen would have photographed more than a single one. Whatever this strange object really is, it is also worth noting that the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration recorded a strange sound near the location of the Eltonen antenna in 1997. The sound has been dubbed the bloop, and despite its dismissal as an iceberg breaking away from a glacier, the sound patterns do not add up to this explanation. Listen to the sound of an actual iceberg that was recorded. Now, listen to the sound that the NOAA research ship recorded at the location of the Elton antenna. Keep in mind, the sound had to be sped up 16 times for it to even be audible.
Clearly, something other than an iceberg made this sound. It sounds more as if it were an ultra-low frequency transmission sound, produced from a VLF radio wave. These sounds travel in a zigzag pattern, explaining the intermittent nature of the sounds. Due to the very low frequency of the signals, however, these transmitters need to be very large. The scientists working on the USNS Altonin estimated the submerged antenna they photographed to be approximately 2,000 feet tall, which is about the same height as some of the tallest radio towers in the world. This would certainly be large enough to broadcast VLF transmissions if the structure was a radio tower. Because the alternate antenna is submerged and likely damaged, the transmissions would probably be weakened, explaining why the NOAA researchers had only recorded these sounds when they were near the alternate antenna. The Wedge of Ayud is another example of an ancient machine component. This object was discovered near the city of Ayud in Romania, buried over 30 feet deep, and found alongside mastodon bones underground, making it an estimated age of 10,000 years old. As mentioned in my previous video, the Wedge of Ayud is remarkable due to its composition of 90% aluminum. Aluminum cannot be extracted from ores without the usage of smelting and complex machinery. This object appears to be an attachment for a larger piece of equipment, possibly a standard excavator or a bucket wheel excavator. It could not have come from a modern excavator, however, since aluminum alloys are not used to make excavator attachments. Alloy steel is the material that modern attachments are made from. For those who adhere to only conventional explanations, there are no answers as to who had made this object, how it was constructed, or why it was buried over 30 feet deep. Another example of a component of an advanced ancient device, dated to be thousands of years old, is the clear quartz crystal lens, which was discovered in Nineveh, Iraq. It is believed that refraction had only been studied beginning around 1,000 years ago, yet this lens is convexly curved to create a magnification effect. The flat edge around the perimeter of the glass seems to have been carved so that it could be held within a frame, either to be worn over the eye or to be placed into a telescope, perhaps. It is believed that the telescope was only invented in 1608, but if ancient people had created lenses, then it would not have been difficult for them to have made telescopes. Carvings on the Oi Saleswara temple in India even depict people using a seeing device, perhaps similar to a telescope, lending to the possibility that humans had created telescopes long before Hans Lippershey had created his version in the early 1600s AD. Some researchers theorize that the lens was used as an inlay for furniture. However, it does not seem reasonable that a rare and hard-to-see crystal would be used as an inlay, rather than something more eye-catching. Inlays were not used frequently enough in ancient Mesopotamian furniture for archaeologists to assume that this lens was used as an inlay. The clarity, shape, and magnification power of the object are demonstrations of its functionality as a lens rather than a decorational piece. There are also nanopockets carved into the lens that had once been filled with a liquid hydrocarbon mixture. Modern telescope lenses are also filled with chemical compounds to improve their magnification. Likewise, the pockets and compounds used on the ancient lens found in Nineveh would have increased its magnification capability, further proving that the lens had not been created for purely decorative purposes, and that the creator of the lens possessed remarkable engineering skill, which people were believed to have not understood until more recently. An unnatural piece of nearly pure aluminum was found embedded in a piece of coal in Vladivostok, Russia. X-ray diffraction was used on the object, and it was determined that it was composed of 96 to 98 percent aluminum and 2 to 4 percent magnesium. This concentration is even more pure than the wedge of Ayud, and this object should have been even older since it was encased in coal. This object appears to be a broken piece of a linear gear rack, which is a component often used in advanced machinery. 
and in devices such as microscopes and telescopes to adjust them. In 1961, Prospectors were searching Mount Olancha in California for geodes to cut open. One of the rocks they collected was discovered to contain an odd object when they cut it open. The item consisted of a ceramic base with a non-corrosive copper shaft running through the center of it. There had been a hexagonal casing made of wood that was pulverized when the artifact was sawn in half. Samples were taken of the pulverized wood casing and it was determined that the wood had become fossilized, revealing that the object was ancient. The traces of the wooden casing were discarded after the tests were done, however, so the validity of the test cannot be proven or disproven. In between the once-present wooden casing and the ceramic base, there is a non-corrosive copper conductor made of the same material as the shaft. Skeptics of the coastal artifact's ancient age promote the theory that the object is nothing more than the 1920s-era Champion brand spark plug. The x-rays taken of the artifact seem to show something other than the spark plug, though. As for how the supposed spark plug had become encased in stone, skeptics believe that as the metal casing of the object corroded, the spark plug became encased in an iron oxide concretion derived from the rusting spark plug. A key issue with this reasoning is that the coastal artifact is not made of iron or any corrosive metal. Rather, the casing had been made of wood, which was fossilized. The coastal artifact would be encased in an iron oxide concretion if it was encased by this type of corrosion. Instead, this object is encased in hardened clay. The hexagonal shaft would not have been made of wood if it were a 1920 spark plug either. To this day, the hardened clay has not been removed from around the object to prove that it is a spark plug. Leaving the Koso artifact encased indicates that there is something about the artifact's identity that is being hidden. There are also depictions of advanced technological objects etched into the stones of ancient temples around the world. One well-known example is of the Dendera lights in the Hathor temple at Dendera in Egypt. These objects depicted share the design of a light bulb, such as a crook's tube. It would make sense that if there were somehow light bulbs in the ancient past, they would have had a more basic design, like some of the first ones that were invented in more recent societies. The temples do not have any evidence of lamp black soot from torches, and there is no indication that the Egyptians embedded any substances within the torches to prevent them from producing this type of soot. The type of soot that was discovered inside of Egyptian temples was dated to be much more recent than these carvings, estimated to have been from the time of the Roman reign in Egypt, ranging from 30 BC to 641 AD. These same light bulbs could have been used in the temples in India, Mexico, and other locations, no soot from torches or torch remnants have been found in these temples, yet they go into very deep, dark locations. No evidence of soot has been found in the Malta or Turkey underground complexes, nor in the carved caves of China, nor in the ancient temples in Indonesia, or in the pyramids in Egypt. The Ankh is another symbol often depicted in ancient Egyptian stone carvings. This shape is nearly identical to another type of light-emitting device that Nikola Tesla had created, called the Electric Oscillator. The Jed Pillar, claimed to represent the backbone of Osiris, is much more similar to an insulator used on power systems. Even more evidence for ancient electrical technology in Egypt is present in the form of the depictions of airplanes and other vehicles and hieroglyphs. In the Temple of Seti I, there are carvings of what appear to be a helicopter, a yacht, a jet plane similar to an ME-163 comet, and something similar to a Star Destroyer spaceship. It is believed that these carvings were initially different looking, and that under the rule of a later pharaoh, the Egyptians had carved different shapes over the originals. If their intention was to write something different on the walls, they would have leveled the surface so that their markings could be legible. There is no distinction in style or depth between the carvings supposedly made by different people to mean different things. It was clearly intentional to make these carvings look the way they do, regardless of who had engraved them and when. The question then is, why did they carve these shapes? Hieroglyphs always depict things which clearly resemble what they are meant to represent. Why do these carvings not represent any antiquated objects, plants, or animals? instead depicting what are apparently vehicles. And these carvings were not made at a later date, since they are identical in depth and style to the surrounding hieroglyphs on this wall, in this temple, and in other temples in Egypt. 
Relatively nearby, in the present-day country of Turkey, a stone carving of what has been recognized as a flying vehicle or even a rocket with a person sitting inside was discovered. Furthermore, figurines known as the Kimbaya artifacts were uncovered in the country of Colombia in South America, which depict most components of a functional aircraft. Although it is claimed that these objects are meant to represent stylized fish, birds, and other creatures, the figures are not anatomically representative of these organisms, since they contain what would be extra appendages and features that these animals do not have. The only similarity between these figures and animals are the faces carved onto the fronts. Even modern aircraft have faces painted onto them sometimes, though. The Kimbaya artifacts do not fully represent birds, because the faces have mouths instead of beaks. And they do not represent fish, because fish generally do not have such long fins. Neither birds nor fish have tails which are both horizontal and vertical. As with the other objects depicted in ancient art in Egypt, the only known objects that these Kimbaya artifacts could represent are airplanes. Other types of transportation have been spotted in ancient art, for example, the bike carving in the Panchavarnaswami temple in India. Analysis has determined that these carvings were made at the same time that these temples were made, and that they are not later additions. Devices which seem to resemble cell phones and tablets are also present in ancient Indian temple stone carvings. Did ancient people really have devices that were similar to the technology of modern times? The advanced ancient objects that people have discovered happen to be buried underground or encased in rock. Anything that may have been present in these temples around the world seems to have been removed, as all of these structures are virtually empty, aside from objects such as stone sarcophagi and statues, and the occasional jewelry left over. If ancient people were capable of creating such elaborate structures made from precisely cut megaliths, they would have been able to create other things such as furniture to place inside of the structures they spent so much time creating. Since there are no other artifacts to be found, it seems likely that they may have either been looted, scavenged for survival after a worldwide catastrophe, or taken to museums. The Smithsonian, for example, is known to collect artifacts of a controversial nature and keep them in the lower levels where visitors cannot see them, only certain individuals with permits are allowed in. It is possible that any artifacts of a controversial nature inside of these ancient structures could have been removed and hidden away, so that the narrative of humanity's technological development is not debunked. Ancient people may have been knowledgeable about advanced technologies similar to the technology of modern times, which does not seem unlikely since they were able to create structures such as the Barobudur Temple in Indonesia, the Great Pyramids of Giza, the nearly 1,000 megalithic statues on Easter Island, or the precisely cut ancient polygonal walls around the world. As I have concluded in previous videos, it seems as if ancient people thousands of years ago were more technologically advanced than we give them credit for. Based on the prevalence of these artifacts that indicate technological sophistication in ancient times, along with the complex structures around the world, it seems that advanced knowledge was shared around the world by people of the same technological capabilities. Perhaps some sort of catastrophe had destroyed these societies, wiped out most of the people, and left behind the damaged remains of the previous civilizations. If you had just survived a worldwide cataclysm, wouldn't you loot the old abandoned structures for supplies? This may be another reason as to why these ancient buildings are empty. Even the iron brackets used to support the structures are gone, probably taken to make tools. Since the survivors did not have the resources to mine and process iron themselves, the individuals who had survived the catastrophe would likely not have known how to replicate the engineering of these technologies, in the same way that most individuals in the present day would not know how to build a car or a microwave. The knowledge of how to replicate the construction of these devices and structures would have therefore been lost in the worldwide catastrophe that occurred thousands of years ago. This would explain how the ancient people who had made these structures could have also made technologically advanced objects, but that the societies existing in between the times of the megalithic construction societies in the modern civilizations were for the most part technologically inept, and that our knowledge of the ancient civilization's advanced technologies has been lost. I will be posting exclusive content onto Patreon for my supporters, so be sure to check the link in the description if you are interested in becoming a member 
of the Shattered History Patreon community. 